Hey folks, this is Rob Lee, uh, the other Rob Lee at Sands. There are two of us. Uh, always remember that. I'm the uh, the one with hair. He's the one with skills. Uh, the other Rob Lee runs the DFER uh, curriculum. Uh, I'm the Rob Lee that focuses on the threat intelligence side of the house. And hopefully you are able to take part in our CTI summit. If you're watching this recording, it's probably already winding down. Uh, but it was a two-day summit uh, with a little over 13,000 people registered by the start of it. A couple thousand people online at any given time. Really awesome to see, especially as a free summit getting out in the community and sharing that topic of cyber threat intelligence pretty far and wide. So the purpose of this video is just to recap a little bit about the keynote and Chris Krebs. Um, so all the other presentations are recorded. The slides are available. Everything's on your SANS portal for you. Um, but with Chris's talk, we just wanted to recap a couple components of it. The talk itself was not recorded to be distributed. So I wanted to hit on a couple themes. Uh, and these themes were things that he brought up, um, things that he mentioned. And, and if you just go look at the hashtag CTI Summit um, hashtag on, on Twitter, uh, you'll find just tons of comments about uh, Chris's presentation. So uh, let's start off with the first obvious thing. Uh, when Chris was at the CSA um, agency, so CSA over at Department of Homeland Security, uh, he left or got fired pretty uh, publicly by President Trump uh, at the time. And it led to a lot of discussions in InfoSec. So the first obvious question is, why do we have him as the keynote of the summit? Well, first and foremost, known Chris for a while, fantastic individual, done a lot of work. CSA and DHS have, have been active members in the community for quite some time. But it was explicitly because of his role in understanding and combating disinformation and misinformation and like a true intelligence professional standing his ground on his assessments and saying, look, you may not like my assessment, you may not agree with it, but this is what we're seeing. And let me tell you that assessment. And um, that was just so awesome, uh, perfectly well done. What I would advise to any intelligence analyst out there is that you've gotta be able to deliver your assessments, especially when people don't like them. Um, and in Chris's case, advocating and, and noting based on everything that he was collecting and seeing, there was no compromise of the votes. There was no uh, lack of election integrity. It was a fair and free election. So he went through that. He went through a lot of the work that went into uh, doing that. And he especially noted a couple important things. Number one was the democratization of intel and security. It was this idea that we need to bring all these folks together, pull them together, and make sure that we're sharing what we know, not just sharing indicators and data, but sharing insights and knowledge, which is really what Intel tends to be about. Also, he, he boasted very accurately and, and well-deservedly so of building kind of the fastest growing ISAC, if you will, or Information Sharing and Analysis Center um, to date, ahead of the election, getting all these state and local officials together to share that information. Um, he was rightfully praising the folks throughout the community, noting that it was a giant team effort. Those state and local folks did a ton of work, even switching in key battleground states like Georgia and Pennsylvania to being able to have audit trails and paper logs, not just digital voting, which was necessary and useful in those recounts. Um, the Georgia votes being counted three different times by hand on paper. That's something very useful. That led into another theme he noted of, well, in InfoSec, importantly, you need to have auditing. And we touched on the SolarWinds breach about how a lot of organizations are saying, hey, we have no evidence of compromise. But the real question is, did you actually have the logs and data to look for that in the first place? But he, he didn't just jump to saying, everybody go figure out supply chain security. Instead, he had very practical advice saying, look, you know, even across the civilian government agencies that he had insight into, there's not a lot of segmentation and best practices with defensible architectures and logging and similar. And before trying to go think about how do we combat these state adversaries, getting some of those basics in place were going to be required to even get a good foothold to then go do that. He also had a pretty stark warning about ransomware. And of course, in his tenure at CSA, we started seeing a lot of ransomware cases, even targeted cases towards hospitals, pharmaceutical companies, et cetera, which is really just dastardly during a global pandemic to see. And he talked about how the fact that more than the state adversaries, those those ransomware cases and the disruption it posed to businesses was probably one of the most um, enlightening parts of the cybersecurity discussion to the CEOs and boards around the community. And now, like never before, we're seeing executive level discussions on security, on cybersecurity, on how we keep our business going, understand that cybersecurity is a business risk, not just some niche IT security thing. 
Um, he also noted very cleanly that post his career at CSA, he is absolutely going and focusing a lot at that CEO and board level because security in the organization starts at the CEO level. If you don't have that buy-in, it is an uphill battle for all that we're going to be doing. You also made some notes around different critical infrastructure sectors, how kind of those industrial side of the house being different than IT and having to have different conversations alluded to the fact that there are many infrastructure providers that aren't under any regulations, though there are plenty that are, and how we might as a community have to explore what do we want as a base level of security for our service and infrastructure providers, even pointing out some of the last minute executive orders that get pushed out around requiring infrastructure owners to understand their customers, like infrastructure as a service and those cloud providers, like who are your customers and where do you fit in the global supply chain to make sure that you have an understanding of why you might be a target and what impact might come if you are targeted. And then of course, I, he mentioned quite a few times in closing up as well about threat modeling and just the necessity on private and public partnership the necessity on understanding your threat model and making sure that you are building security against what your actual risks are instead of just chasing the highest end, you know, sounding APT, whatever discussions. You got to be prepared for state adversaries. They are targeting a lot more companies than people realize. But if you're not protecting against ransomware, if you're not thinking about logging, if you're not thinking about defensible architectures, you're not ever going to get there in the first place. So start with what you can, especially since a large portion of the community doesn't have access to all the resources some of the uh, larger organizations out there do and figure out what you can get done and move the needle because it is doable and so he ended and in, in, you know a phrase that i often say he alluded to on um, this as well with kind of the defense is doable aspect like you can win in this space and by working together understanding intel understanding the value of it and um, we can do it well but he also warned don't just try to have something to say. There was a couple of vendors uh, during the election that came out with a bunch of, hey, here's what I have to say on election security. Oh, by the way, here's a bunch of vulnerabilities dropped at the 11th hour uh, to get my, my news media mentions up. It's not useful. Figure out a way to collaborate, figure out your consumers as an intelligence professional and how to actually satisfy their needs versus just having something to say. So all in all, fantastic keynote by Chris. Uh, we wish him well as a SANS community in his next adventures and appreciate him taking part in our summit. For all of you out there, make sure you check out the CTI Summit recordings and the slides are available. It has two days with two tracks each day of just absolutely stacked content. It was awesome. So thank you very much and take care.